Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at a piece of software, or actually it's a script, uh, which is used for cleaning up your Windows PC. Now, this can actually be very beneficial because it can get rid of a lot of crap that you don't really want on your system, but it is very powerful, so potentially it could absolutely decimate your system. So, with that in mind, before you start any of this, please do make a full backup of your system. Now, this program or script does actually do a registry backup before it proceeds. So potentially you could rescue your system from that, but certainly I would recommend using either System Restore or one of your favorite backup utilities, or even just clone your disk to another drive just to be on the safe side, because these things can do a lot of damage to your system, but conversely, they can also make it significantly better. But ultimately, it's gonna be down to you to decide that. I'm gonna go through it today and show you a product called Winhance, which is a work in progress. So potentially when you're watching this, it may have evolved into something completely different. But at the time of recording, it's actually got a lot of things which I actually quite like. But again, it is quite dangerous. So with that said, let's head over to the computer and take a closer look. Okay, so this is on github.com and it's from Mems Tech Tips. There's actually a YouTube channel as well. So if you wanna see this uh, from YouTube, you can do as well. Got all the information there and tells you basically what it is. So it is a PowerShell GUI designed to optimize and customize your Windows experience. So yeah, you basically get the general idea there. Now in order to run it, you don't actually have to install it as such. What you can do is just copy these commands here and execute them via PowerShell or terminal. So we're gonna do that here. Uh, this bit here, you can run the following command to allow script execution. You may or may not need that to be done. This bit here is the important one, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I'm pretty sure the uh, scripts are unrestricted on our PC already. So click on this one to copy it, then right click down here, and you wanna choose terminal as admin. You'll get the user account control come up as uh, you would expect, so click on yes. And now we just don't wanna do either right click or choose uh, control V to paste it in there. You can see what it's gonna do. So this is basically gonna to go to this GitHub repository and download it. So let's do that, press enter. So now if I close down the other windows, you can see this a little bit better. So obviously important notice, welcome to Winhance. This tool enhances your Windows experience by modifying system settings. By continuing, you agree that you are using the software at your own risk. The authors accept no liability for any issues that may occur. Press OK to agree and continue or cancel to exit. And obviously the same disclaimer comes from us. If you follow this little tutorial or demonstration, if your system does go wrong, you have been warned already, it can potentially damage your system, so please do make a full system backup and make sure that that backup works. With all that said, let's click OK and take a closer look. So at this point now, you'll get the Winhance logo and it'll say loading, please wait. Now some of you, when you're seeing this, you'll think, well, why is this taking so long? There's actually a very good reason for that. In the background, it is actually creating a snapshot of your system registry and saving it to your temporary folder. As you can see here, backup information. So welcome to Winhance. A registry backup has been created and it gives you the location and also a log file as well. So all the information you need is there. You can use the registry file to restore your registry if needed. Again, I would strongly suggest making a backup or try this on a system which is non-mission critical. So let's go ahead. So here is the GUI. Now you can actually change this. So uh, it takes on the system settings. So I've got light mode enabled. So if you want dark mode, click on this bit here and you'll get dark mode, which for some of you may be a little bit less uh, strain on the eyes. So we've got a few tabs here on the side. So we've got the software and apps, which is the one we're gonna be concentrating on. There's also an optimize setting section. I would leave this alone in its entirety because I feel that it's not been uh, documented well enough. So it's basically like, yeah, select all. So privacy settings, okay, but what's it gonna do to our privacy settings? What optimizations are gonna be made? So this I feel is a little bit on the, not so much sketchy, but it's just, it's not resolving itself properly. So we don't know the full information like Windows updates. What's it gonna do? Stop them, pause them, make you just get feature updates. Nobody knows. This is where we need more information. And if you click on the information button, you get absolutely nothing. So yeah, we, uh, yeah, we've got nothing there. There's no information. So I would ignore optimize altogether at the moment. And also we've got the customize. So again, dark mode, you can turn that on and off. We've done that already. So we know how that works. Uh, also we've got select all, 
taskbar, start menu, explore. Again, these have not been documented at all. There's no flexibility there, so it's just like taskbar. What's it going to do? Is it going to move it? What? I don't get it. So yeah, that needs a little bit of work, I feel, from the author. If we go down to the About section, there's actually some quite useful things here. So you can actually create a Winhance desktop shortcut. So if you actually want to make any changes, you can do. So if we do Create, and we've now got a shortcut on the desktop. So if we want to run this script again, we can do very easily without having to go online and go to the GitHub repository and typing in commands. We can just click on there. So that is actually quite useful. I like that. That's good. And also you can go to GitHub the owner's website or go to their YouTube channel or if you want to you can support the project if you feel you wish to. Um, yeah so it gives you an idea of what's going on that is pretty much it but we're going to concentrate like I said on the software and app section because I feel this is actually a little bit better. You've got two sections here at the moment so you've got the install software, remove Windows app so we can minimize that. You see so install if for some reason you install something or it goes completely wrong and you want to reinstall something you can actually reinstall software. Uh, I actually tried this on another PC and accidentally I actually removed the uh, Xbox app for Windows. It managed to completely knacker up my Microsoft Flight Simulator installation. So it's good that you can actually reinstall Windows components from the list, well this basic list anyway, and also Microsoft Store, uh, browsers, Chrome, etc. So if you obviously if you remove Microsoft Edge and you haven't got a browser, you can use this software to then install Chrome, Brave, whatever you want to do. So that's pretty useful. And also OneDrive, if you remove OneDrive and you actually think you want it back after, you can reinstall it. Now this is a limited list, but certainly is uh, better than nothing at all. So that is the installation side of it, which we're not going to go into at the moment. We're going to go into remove Windows apps. So it's quite uh, aggressive so it, the default is select all so we've got color coded options here and also we've got these radio buttons so to select or deselect so let's actually do uh, deselect all of them just to be on the safe side so the ones that are actually in green are currently installed on your system the ones that are in red are currently uninstalled or not present so I've done some cleanup of this previously so some of these are missing already now something to bear in mind as well the things you select on here, this piece of software will actually create a script which runs at startup. So if Windows Update tries to reinstall, say for instance, Photos or OneDrive, it will automatically uninstall it. So you may have slightly longer boot up times because it may potentially be running that script. So I just wanted to bear that in mind, keep that in the back of your brain so that if you do actually install this or run it, the script, although when it's closed, it's kind of not there, as you can see, um, you can close that down and we'll click on yes or no. Click on no because we don't want the pop-up. So we can go back into it and we can rerun it. So it's running the script again and we'll do the backup again as it should do really. So again, now it's reopened and it's, uh, it's back to how it was. So again, do be really careful with this. It can do a lot of things to your system and it does stay resident. So. I think we should uh, let's get started and do a little bit more of a cleanup. So like I said, I'm going to get rid of the select all section here and let's uh, take a look. So calculator, we want camera, we want clip champ, we definitely don't want that. We don't want copilot, mail and calendar can go. Again, obviously, if, if you want to use any of these things, then please obviously do feel free to uh, keep them and do whatever you want to do. It's your system ultimately. Um, I'm going to keep Microsoft Edge. And I want the Microsoft Store, uh, Teams, I think I'll keep it at the moment. Notepad is used, News, not really. Uh, New Outlook, don't want that. Movies and TV, that I can go. The uh, Office Hub, uh, OneDrive, don't use this. So again, just uh, choose which ones you actually want to keep on your system. So Solitaire to do, uh, Weather, Photos. Actually, no, I do use Photos. Don't want Steps Recorder. So yeah, basically you're selecting the ones you don't want. So I'll get rid of that. Keep Power Ultimate. Uh, sticky Notes, never use that. Windows Media Player, I do actually want that. Notepad, Paint, I want to keep. PowerShell and Terminal, Xbox. I do, like I said, I use the Xbox Game Center. So I actually do want to keep that bit. So yeah, I think that is uh, pretty much it. I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that. Of course, a lot of these things you can reinstall after, as long as you disable the script, which tries to keep on removing it. Anyway, so let's uh, click on remove apps, although I would strongly suggest double checking just to make sure that you have chosen the right things. 
think we are okay there. So do be careful. This is quite uh, quite dangerous. So we'll click on remove apps. You're right to remove apps and features from your system that could cause instability. Missing items will have to be reinstalled individually. Are you sure you want to continue? So again, they're being quite open about it that this is quite destructive or potentially could be. You do have to be pretty careful. So I'm gonna click on yes. And it says you're about to remove OneDrive from your system. This will uninstall OneDrive completely, remove OneDrive integration from Windows and disable OneDrive features system-wide. Are you sure you want to continue? So obviously do consider this. If you use OneDrive or have used OneDrive and maybe you have OneDrive active, things that are on your desktop are synchronized to OneDrive, your document settings, pictures, all that kind of stuff potentially could be in OneDrive. So if you remove it, you will potentially lose all of that information from your PC. Now it still will be in OneDrive, so you can go online and get it, but if you haven't synchronized, then yeah, potentially this could be quite dangerous. So just make sure if you're removing this, that you're happy and that you've got backups that work just in case. Again, I'm sorry to keep on stressing this, but it is very important. This is a very powerful tool and can cause lots of damage, but again, it can clean up your system. So yeah, it's the uh, flipping the coin time. Anyway, are you sure you want to continue? Yes, we are. Currently all my stuff is backed up anyway. So worst case scenario, I can do a system restore or do it from my Synology. So yeah, I'm absolutely fine with that. So what it will do in the top where it says software and apps, it will say what it's actually doing. So you may get the occasional pop-up notifying you. Oh, there we go, just in time. So there we go. And it says there, a startup task was created to prevent it from reinstalling. You, if you experience issues, you can delete the OneDrive removal task in task scheduler. So it might be worth making a note of that if you ever want to reinstall OneDrive. Again, it's gonna go through and just get rid of the other things, with a clip, champ, etc. Just basically giving the system a little bit of a clean up there and getting rid of these applications which we potentially don't want. So just be patient, let it do its thing, and uh, we'll come back when there's something else to interact with. Okay, so there we go. Selected items have been removed. A startup task was created uh, to prevent those apps from reinstalling. If you experience issues with automatic removal in the future, you can delete the bloat removal task in Task Scheduler. So let's uh, take a quick look at Task Scheduler. So if we just go to the bottom here, type in Task, we go to Task Scheduler, open this up and look in the Task Scheduler library. You can see we've now got uh, an entry called Winhance. And if I make this a little bit bigger. So there we are, we've got our bloat removal task which is gonna run at system startup and also the OneDrive removal. So that's gonna try and run every single time on system startup. So if for some reason some of those apps uh, want to try and reinstall themselves, then yeah, there you go. Alternatively, if you obviously don't want this to run, you can just choose the task. Uh, we'll end it and we'll do that one as well and we'll end those. And then we'll actually uh, delete them as well. So they, the schedule has been ended. You can't just remove them because you need to remove them first, otherwise you wouldn't get registry errors, I believe. So there we go. There are our two uh, tasks removed. So we'll click OK there. So now whatever we've made changes to here, if we do a Windows update and it decides that it wants to reinstall some of these applications, we can then go in manually and we can just go in and remove the apps from this script. I think that's possibly the better way to go. I don't necessarily want more tasks running when Windows starts up. Maybe you do. Let me know in the comments section. Do you uh, appreciate that? Or would you have preferred some sort of tick box to say, please do not install these tasks? I think that might be a nice option. Anyway, so there we go. That is pretty much everything gone from there. And now if we close down this app and then rerun it, basically we'll have a lot more red marks because uh, most of the stuff is gone. And actually, I think it's updated already. Yeah, so it's alphabetical order from calculator down through to Xbox of the installed section. And then you've got alphabetical order starting numerically, 3D viewer all the way down to uh, WordPad, which yeah, uh, WordPad's pretty awful these days. Actually, in fact, I would think I would have kept WordPad, but yeah, anyway, I've overlooked that one. Regardless, it's gone, so we can always reinstall it if we need to, or restore from a backup. Anyway, so there you go, there is Winhance. I think we're pretty much done there, so we'll close this down, and that's it. Now we can just carry on using our computer. After a reboot, you should find your PC to be uh, a little bit quicker and have a little bit less bloat.
Okay, so there you go. Um, I do apologize for all the warnings during this video, but I think it is really important to make you aware that although like a lot of these scripts that are available from uh, Winhance and obviously others as well, they can be quite dangerous. And if you're a little bit of a novice or even experienced like myself, you can make mistakes. Like I just got rid of WordPad, which I kind of really wanted, but I suppose I've got Notepad, so it's absolutely fine. But regardless, these tools can be dangerous. So before you do anything, obviously do all the usual things, make a full system backup, uh, ideally clone your system to another disk if you possibly can, just be on the safe side. And obviously there is a registry backup built in. So that is pretty useful, but um, it isn't necessarily gonna save you in all instances. So I would strongly suggest making a backup before you start. Also, I would strongly suggest you heading over to the GitHub page uh, for Winhance and checking out the latest features and updates. Hopefully it evolves into being a, a much more accessible application. I especially would like to see the things such as where the Windows update, the taskbar, just have that explained a little bit more, maybe broken down into individual sections because maybe I do want to have my taskbar on the left, but I don't want it to do all the other stuff that it's planning on doing. I think that would be a good thing for it to uh, continue into the future. Anyway, let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. I think it's pretty interesting, but I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are on it. But I think that's going to wrap this video up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.